guys, welcome to the 30 paintings in 30 days project. So every day of this month, at least 30 days of this month, we are gonna create a little painting a day and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna experiment mostly with watercolor and gouache and um, let's get to painting and I will see you at the end. Okay guys, welcome to the 30 paintings in 30 days project. We are on painting number 13. So let's get to it, shall we? As usual, I have a paint palette in front of me. I've got my inspiration photos to the left of me, a few paint brushes and water to the right of me, and let's get started. These are just supposed to be little painting studies as we've stated in the past. Um, something to help you get used to, maybe a new medium or new, um, maybe you're used to watercolor, for instance, which is what I'm using, um, but maybe you're, this is a new brand of watercolor and you don't know how they're gonna react. Um, maybe um, you're trying to get used to using a particular set of colors together that you don't normally put together, a new palette of colors, new composition, something like that. So um, there's a lot of reasons to do these little studies. They're just practice, but they're fun practice. So let's get started. I am going to start as usual with my half inch flat Princeton Neptune brush, which is in my favorite brush. We are gonna start with, I've got a photo of actually patio umbrellas from a restaurant I went to last year with my parents and husband. Um, not only are the colors normally ones I don't necessarily use together, we've got this brown, a red, um, a sort of olivey green and, and some white together. There's a little bit of like darkness in the background. Um, we're gonna do something inspired by this photo. I don't normally use like those colors together without a bright, bright pop of yellow or turquoise or something, but we're gonna give it a shot. That's what these little studying paintings are all about. So let's prop our book up, there we go. We're gonna start with um, the olivey tone, and I'm gonna grab the Jane Davenport Water Spirit, which is a very olivey. It reminds me of sort of a cascade green, whoops. There, it is right there. So we're gonna start with that color. I'm gonna add some water to it. And I'm going to map out a shape in the background. And paint color, color it in with my paintbrush. Um, and then I'm going to go in with uh, PBO's Burnt Umber. See, I'm remembering about these PBO paints. They don't want to be super friendly about rehydrating all the time. I'm remembering you <laughs> very well. Okay, so we're going to map out the next umbrella. and then fill it in. Now I'm gonna try hard to leave white space, which as I've stated before, if you've watched any of the paintings in this series or any of my uh, watercolor painting tutorials I've had on the channel in the past, you know, I'm, I get focused into working with the paint and I forget about leaving white space, but you know, I'm not a watercolor purist by any stretch, so I have no problem with grabbing a white gel pen or something to bring the white space back if needed. All right, then I'm gonna go in with Jane Davenport's Ladybug, which is a nice sort of bright red color. And map out the red umbrella that's in the front of this inspiration photo.
Okay, before I do anything else, I wanna dry that, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a little bit smaller brush, one of my round brushes, this is the round number four, and I'm gonna go in with the Jane Davenport ink, which is her dark blue gray color. I'm gonna actually mix it with a little bit of the green and the brown that's already on my palette. I might grab some more brown. I'm gonna grab some of the Van Dyke brown and just make sort of that dark background color that I see here. So we're gonna put some here. and fill in the shapes between the umbrellas. Now again, these are little study paintings, so you're not looking for it to um, be, one, super realistic like at all. Let's see. I'm gonna go here and here. It's just representative of what you see in the in the picture. You're trying to create something inspired by. Let's see. I'm trying to map out these shapes so they kind of make sense. There we go. All right. That was stressful. <laughs> okay, so now while that dries a little bit, I'm gonna start with the green umbrella. That one's the one that's probably dry the most. I'm gonna take some of our water spirit color again. I'll let it go ahead and mix with the background color a little bit. And I'm gonna add some shadows I'm actually gonna to switch to a smaller brush for that, this, because that was way too big. I'm gonna just hint at refining my shapes. And you may find when you do this, you know that's an umbrella, and but nobody else does. That's okay, again, these are little studies they're not supposed to be perfection. Okay, so then I'm gonna go into the brown one and I'm gonna actually go with the dark Van Dyke brown for this one. Just refine, again, refine the shapes. Referencing the photo. If you want to blend the paint at all, not going too far before you bring some water back into the picture, especially again with um, the Jane Davenport paints, they dry really quickly.
Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the red. I'm gonna go in with a Jane Davenport color called Frida, which is a dark red. I had a lot of coffee this morning. My hands are a little shaky, FYI, in case you didn't notice by that wiggly red line. <laughs> Okay, add my color, go in with some water to get some depth in there and blend it out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go in with the ink color and actually just the little umbrella finial on both of those. So now while that's like drying and settling, I'm gonna take, um, I'm gonna go back to a bigger brush and I'm gonna take the Jane Davenport, well, I'm gonna just take this color that's on here I'm gonna add a whole bunch of water to some of it and get a very light color. So the more, generally speaking with watercolor, the more water you add, the lighter the shade is of, of color. And I'm gonna put just a little bit, I don't want too much, that's actually too much. And I wanna suggest a shadow um, for this white umbrella. Just put a little bit and then pull the pigment up with water. Again, a little bit. And then pull it up with water. There's a water puddle right there, so I'm gonna dry it with my rag. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that same color that we're using. Okay, just suggest the little kind of flap that's in the middle of the umbrella. I'm gonna do the same thing up here. Okay. Switch back to my little tiny, teeny, tiny brush. Grab a little bit um, darker shade of that tone that we're using to just refine the outlines on some things. That little puddle right there, I've got to, I have to dry it, hold on, okay. Okay, now we're gonna go into the same ink color, the dark blue-gray. Um, get my bigger round brush here. Add some touches of this dark color to the background. Okay. 
I'm not sure this is a successful paint study as much as an interesting experiment, but that's what these are about. These are not about perfection, so I don't even want you to go there. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just experiment and play. I'm going to take a little bit of this bright, bright green and add a little bit of the, um, that color to some, like the green umbrella. We've got a bright pink on here. And I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. This is definitely like the kind of little painting study that you could do maybe when you're out at a cafe with friends. You could draw some notes in the margin. Um, I think it's a cute little painting. Let's see what it looks like when we pull the tape off, but let's dry it first. Okay, before we even pull all the tape off, I can tell you that I'm not a super big fan of just using these colors together without some pop of something, but um, it's an interesting experiment. And see, as I pull the tape off, it's more interesting without the tape on there. So that is painting number 13, through version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have, um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye guys.